Going over to the political part of the podcast, you have Donald Trump attempting to court the United Auto Workers. So he's attempting to win their endorsement because they have a large populace that they are based out of or that make them up. Now, I say it's a lost cause because for decades, not just the past you know one or two elections, for decades, they unquestionably always prop up the Democratic nominee. And that's where a lot of your dues, if you're a part of the United Auto Workers, that's a lot where your dues go. They go straight into politicians' pockets. Politicians then give you bailouts and extra privileges, but that's not corruption for some reason. Now, most, most recently, the United Auto Workers endorsed Joe Biden in the 2020 election. So it's not only are they getting, setting a signal and all their minions will actually vote, you know, in concert will all vote for the president, but it's also millions upon millions upon millions in dollars sent as donations. Now, Trump is coming back and his message to the United Auto Workers are saying he wants to roll back Biden's mandates and laws that are, quote, destroying your business. Now, again, it's a fluid situation. There might be, a, might be an announcement within minutes, might make this outdated, but right now, the union has actually withheld its official endorsement for President Joe Biden's reelection over concerns of Joe Biden's push to EVs will leave more members behind. It will. However, the UAW president, Sean Fain, already ruled out endorsing Trump when they met privately with Biden last week as the union starts their bargaining for their new contract with the big three automotive companies. The big three being what used to be the dominant of automotive. Used to have General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler. And then competition showed up that Coincidentally, de- coincidentally, did not have unions and made a more reliable, more bulletproof product, which is why Toyota will last a million miles in a quarter of a century. Long live the internal combustion engine for now. When it comes to EVs, Trump does have a point because there are less components that go into making an EV vehicle. You have less low skilled labor needed to create the vehicle. Less low skilled jobs will be needed for those vehicles. You have General Motors, they have their goal of getting all EV by 2035. That's a huge shift in their portfolio and of course, right now, with the current profit margins, most of it still comes from internal combustion engines, SUVs, and trucks. Now, even with all that being said, they will still not... It, there's, politics is a fascinating thing. It's almost like a cult for some people where they will vote for someone, left or right, no matter what, which I find ridiculous and preposterous. I always tell people, a good rule of thumb, if you want to see someone, if, if they're actually politically educated, if they say, oh yeah, I, I want to vote for Trump, or I want to vote for Biden, okay. Tell me three specific initiatives you agree with or you support. What are three things they did for you or three things that they say they're going to do, whether that be an economic policy, a cultural policy, just what are three specific bullet points? And if they can't actually say any, then you know they're an uneducated voter, which some might say is useless, others might say is detrimental to the electoral process. But it's one of those fancy things where Trump does have a point with the EV technologies. It's going to decrease the number of people needed for the automotive community, but what if the EV technologies cause those companies to go bankrupt because they're not making an immediate profit? The government will also bail them out probably like in 2008. Coincidence? No, of course not. So Trump is trying, but Trump is trying. I mean, he has a point, but he's also trying to inject logic into politics, which is a hard thing in and of itself. Given he's human, he has a finite number of resources. I think it could be better spent elsewhere in terms of his moves on the political chessboard. Probably more prudent to court other segments of the industry and other industries in and of itself. But as I always say, time shall tell. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Also want to let everyone know we're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of August. So I greatly appreciate you taking the time to click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to take the time to comment and like. All those things really help out the videos get shared more and more. Also, don't forget to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.